Okay, so this is the second tutorial in the coin series. I have made a blueprint of a coin and I've put some behaviors in the blueprints that for event tick allows it to rotate and then for actor begin overlap allows me to get an output that lets me know it's been picked up and then it also sets the coin to invisible and stops collisions. Uh, for this next step, we're going to essentially create a power up. So we're gonna say, when you get the coin, let's do something to the actor. So in order to do this, I'm gonna make a little bit of space here for my other actor, which is the thing that's colliding with the coin, and I'm gonna promote this to variable. I'm also gonna make sure that I'm pinning this so that it's executing, it's firing. And instead of other actor, I would like to give this a different name. So this is the colliding player. So the player that runs into the coin is the other actor that gets saved as a variable now. And if I move down this line, I can fire a new action, which is going to change that actor. So here I can say set actor scale 3D and I'm going to be setting the actor scale for colliding player, which is the variable that I created. You need to make sure that you're setting a value here. If you just do zero and don't do anything, when you collide, oops, when you collide with the coin, it's gonna scale you down so that you're zero and it's gonna wreak havoc with how you're viewing it. You might just try and leave these two windows up and try working a little bit like this for right now. Um, okay, so instead of zero, let's make this two and let's press play. So now I'm supersized, but the problem is when I'm supersized, when I jump, I have the same old jump of what I had when I was small and my run speed is the old run speed. So it looks like I'm sort of running in place or, or moonwalking. So what I'm gonna do now is show us how we can also change those elements of the character behavior. So I'm gonna right click out here and say, get player character. And if you only have a single player, this is fine. Using player index zero will give you the first player, but player index one would be the second player. So this is gonna work for a single player game. And if you have a two player game, we're gonna need to figure out how to differentiate between the two players in your scripts. So I'm gonna get this, and then I'm going to, from that, get the character movement, which is part of the player character. And then from the character movement, I'm gonna pull that off, and I'm going to say set jump Z velocity. Now, I already knew what this was, but if you're looking to change something about the character, the best way to do it is go into the third person blueprints and open up that blueprint for the third person. Go to character movement. And if you wanna change something about jumping, well, here's everything about jumping. Amount of air control you can get, etc. But jump Z velocity is currently 700. So if I go back to my coin and I say, jump to velocity, I wanna set you to 700, no, 1400, double that. There we go. Now I'm hard coding this, which is not necessarily the smartest way to go, but it's letting me get the point across pretty quickly on what we're doing. Now, if I was to try and drag this off and do the next step, it won't work because I need to reference character movement when I say set walk max speed, set max walk speed. Connect those, change that walk speed. What is it? Let's go back to our third person. Let's search for walk. Max, max walking speed is 500. Max walking while crouched is 300. So let's go back here and say 500. Let's make it 1,000 because I'm twice as high as I was before. Compile it, play it. And now when I grab the coin and I jump, and I move, it's feeling much better. 
I haven't changed the physics, and so my character has the same amount of mass when they're larger as they did when they were smaller. So I'm getting a little bit of a weightlessness feeling, but that's, that's working okay for me. Now, what if you wanted this to be something that comes on for a short while and then turns off? I can set a delay, and that delay could be, oh, let's say 10 seconds. And then I could select these two objects and the scale object, and let's grab the colliding player at the same time. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and grab this player character, and I can copy and paste those items here. Repin this up, set the scale back to one, set the jump velocity to 700, set the max walking speed back to 500. Goodbye all, save and play. And now I grab the coin, I can move faster, I can jump super high, I can move faster, I can jump super high, and eventually after 10 seconds, it should have me shrink back down. There we go. So now I can't jump as high. Now if you wanted to test this and you didn't want to count seconds like I was doing in my head, you can zoom in on your delay and when you press play and then run this, it will actually tell you on screen how many seconds you have left. This is a good way to just test that your delay is working without having to actually count. Um, obviously the other thing is I could set the delay to really low, um, but you know, odds are you are gonna want your power up to last a little while. I'm just gonna set this back to 10 for now and, and leave it at that. Uh, and so that concludes the second tutorial. So we have created a coin that spins and we have created a power up associated with it so that when I collect this coin, it scales me up for a limited amount of time, increases my jump and my movement speed. Uh, you can also use this to call any of the character movement elements uh, and make changes to it. And obviously it will work to scale up as well as to scale down. So hopefully that will be of use to some of you. Good luck and let me know if you've got any questions.